Okay, let's start by drawing our diagram. We've got the metal rod with three different types of metal. Here's our copper. The thermal conductivity of copper is given by 397 watts per meter per kelvin. We've got aluminium in the middle. K for aluminium is equal to 238 watts per meter per kelvin. And then we've got brass on the end. The thermal conductivity of brass is equal to 109 watts per meter per kelvin. This end is the hot end, it's at 100 degrees C. This end's the cold end, it's at 0 degrees C. Let's call this temperature of junction 1, Tj1, and this one temperature of junction 2, Tj2. Okay, so part A is asking us to find Tj1. Part B is asking us to find Tj2. Now what we know is that this reaches a steady state, which means that we must have the same amount of heat flow through this part as through this part and through this part. If this wasn't so, we'd have a build-up of energy at one place, and so we would not reach a steady state. Okay, so that tells us that P, which is equal to K for copper, now, for copper, it's got surface area A, and it's over a length L, which is 6 metres in this case. And the temperature change across the copper is 100 minus Tj1. This is equal to the heat flow, let's put up here, this is equal to the heat flow through the aluminium. And the hot side is Tj1, the cold side is Tj2. And then this is also equal to the heat flow through the brass. The hot side is Tj2 and the cold side is 0. Okay, now let's cancel out our common factors. So get rid of the P now. Cancel out the A's and the L's in each case. So we've got K for copper, 100 minus Tj1 is equal to K for aluminium, Tj1 minus Tj2 is equal to K for brass times Tj2. Now we've got three equations and two unknowns here. So we need to solve it simultaneously. We can write that Tj2 using this part and this part is equal to K for copper, 100 minus Tj1 over K for brass. So if we wanted to put in numbers, K for copper is 397. So this is 397 over 109, 100 minus Tj1. Okay, now what we can do is use this part and this part. Let's call this one, two. Use one and two, and we can substitute in this for our Tj2. So we've got copper, that's 397, 100 minus Tj1 is equal to aluminium, which is our 238, Tj1 minus Tj2, which is 397 over 109 times 100 minus Tj1. Okay, now we've only got one unknown, so we can collect together all the Tj1s over this side and all the pure numbers over this side. So we've got 397 times 100 plus 238 times 397 times 100 over 109. So that works out to 126,384. Let's pull Tj1 out as a common factor. And then we've got this 238. We've got the 397 over 109 times the 238 for this Tj1, and then we've got this Tj1 here, which is 397. So solving, we can divide this through by this, and we end up with Tj1 is equal to 84.2 degrees C. Okay, so this is our answer for A. For part B, we need to find the temperature of junction 2. So Tj2 is equal to, we said up here it was 397, over 109, 100 minus Tj1, which is 
So solving that, we end up with 57.5 degrees C. Okay, so both of these temperatures are between 100 and 0 degrees C, as we'd expect. So this seems like a reasonable answer.